what's up guys welcome back to my channel i hope you guys are doing good so i'm back with another valentine's day design i'm just like giving you guys all the valentine inspo this year and yes i know my nail beds are yellow but i can explain um yeah so normally i put um nude acrylic on my nails um, so I have something to file down to, but I ran out of monomer and I had to make things work. So I had to use this yellow monomer that I had. So yeah, otherwise my nail beds were going to be looking a hot mess and I wasn't about to be on camera like that. So I'd rather take the yellow nail beds than have like ratchet nails. But anyways, it's getting covered up, so it really doesn't matter. Um, it might show through on the sides a little bit but i filed most of it off and yeah it is what it is um you can't really see it in the end result unless you're like right up there near my nails you know but yeah um i have to order more so i'm definitely placing my order for regular monomer tonight because i never realized that how good it was with just like the nude acrylic and not like any other color because then it kind of messes things up but yeah like i said you can't really tell because i filed it off but anyways after a long explanation about my nail beds um we're doing a poly gel set so in the beginning of the video i already prepped my nails obviously and i went in with my dehydrator and primer and um, a base gel since we're doing a poly gel set now i'm creating a nail bed with this nude shade from gershon in 004 um, i kind of just placed a little bead on the nail and used my brush to shape it into a nail bed this is like my all-time favorite nude poly gel um, I tried to look for the kit on Amazon, but I don't know what's going on. I don't even know if their stuff is on Amazon anymore because I haven't been able to find it. So yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. Um, McCart has another shade like this in their House of Flores poly gel kit called Chrysanthemum, but I'm low on that one because I like overused it. So yeah, surprisingly, I still have some of this one left. Um, so I went ahead and cured the nail bed and for the tip color, I'm using this color called Alette from McCart. It's a glittery, like clear poly gel. So I'm just placing some on the tip of the nail and working it up the sides of the small line of the nail bed that I created. Um, and then I'm just like brushing the rest of the poly gel in place, kind of going side to side down the nail and removing any excess. Um, so yeah, you want to make sure you get it up the sides so it will look like a French nail And if you get any on the nail bed portion, you can just like wipe it off So I went ahead and cured that nail and I'm gonna be applying this shade from McCart. It's called Rosy. It's a really unique color. It's kind of like a purple shade, but it almost has like a grayish undertone to it in a way. It's a really unique shade. And I've been doing like a lot of like pink and red Valentine sets. So I was like, let's try to like add in a different color. So I thought this purplish shade would be really cute. Um, of course, I'm going to be adding like a little bit of pink to it and stuff, but I wanted to keep like the theme of this set kind of more like purple based if that makes sense um so on this nail i'm going in with some of the poly gel um i'm only applying one layer on this nail because i'm going over um this nail with like a bunch of glitter so it doesn't really matter like how it looks or anything because it's literally getting covered up by glitter and i'm going to be encapsulating it um, so yeah, I'm just um, brushing the poly gel in place right now. I'm going to be using some fine iridescent glitter as the base. Before I even cure in the lamp, I'm going to apply some base gel and apply like um, that iridescent glitter as the base on the nail. And then I'm going to go over it with more glitters. As you can see, I'm applying the base gel now. I'm just using some McCart base gel um, and I'm applying that fine iridescent glitter. Just have like hints of like you know the rainbow reflex in the background of the other glitters that i'm adding um so i'm adding these little rose gold hearts um and then i have some bigger ones they're kind of like a purplish color and i'm also using some clear and pink four point stars and i'm just like randomly placing them into the gel and i'm gonna like cure them in place
And on the next two nails, I'm just going to be applying that color rosy to both of them. Um, these two nails are going to have nail art on them, and this color is going to be the base color for both of these nails. Later on, I'm actually going to go in with a second layer um, of the poly gel on both of them to build up the color and um, give some more thickness to the nails. Um, as you can see, one coat is like not enough, and I accidentally did hit the pinky a little bit when I went to cure in my lamp, but I did like fix it when I went to go filing. It was just like a little bit of the poly gel kind of like had a dent in it up by the cuticle area. So I just end up like fixing that with my cuticle bit later on. Um, by the way, I am using some base gel as a slip solution and then a little bit of isopropyl alcohol in my dabbing dish. Um, if my brush gets sticky, I kind of like dip my brush in there and wipe it off. Um, but I find that this poly gel works really good with a base gel as a slip solution um, because it is a little bit stiff um, and it was really cold in my nail room last night. So the base gel just helped the poly gel glide down the nail a lot easier. Um, like I said in plenty of my other videos, if you ever have that problem, you can use base gel as a slip solution or you can actually soak your poly gels in warm water for like 10 minutes. Um, to soften them, but yeah, I didn't have time to do all that So I'm just using the base gel and that worked pretty good. Just sometimes your brush ends up getting a little bit sticky um, So I kind of like soak it in the um, isopropyl alcohol Now I'm going to go ahead and encapsulate the French nail and then the nail with the glitter on it. I'm using McCart Clear Poly Gel to do this. Um, so yeah, I just squeezed the poly gel right onto the nail and I accidentally did get a little bit of an air bubble. So you're going to see me like poking them out. That's one thing you can do if you get like an air bubble in your poly gel. You can just use the other end of the brush to um, like poke them out and just continue patting it in place. Sometimes that happens with me, like the bottles will be really hard to squeeze and like they almost like hurt my hand, that's how hard they are. Um, and like sometimes you get like a little air bubble if you squeeze it out too fast. Um, so yeah, you can just do that and that will get rid of it. Um, the base gel also helps get rid of that as well. Um, but yeah, when I'm patting the poly gel in place, I'm always starting by the cuticle and then working side to side down the nail. I usually um, keep that little rounded end that comes out of the bottle by the cuticle area and I use that to build my apex. So I focus that poly gel in that area and then I don't really brush it down only to blend it into like the poly gel towards the tip a little bit, but I focus most of the poly gel in that area to build my apex as you can see. And I also go in and like use my brush to smooth the nail out to make sure that it's as even as possible before I cure in my lamp.
just going to go in with that second coat of rosy on the other two nails like i said before i'm adding a second coat to build up the color and you know build up the structure of the nails because they were way too thin um so yeah i wanted the color to be more opaque and a little bit thicker so that all of the nails were even all around so i'm applying it just like i did for the clear poly gel um like i said i squeezed the rounded end and leave that by the cuticle and use that to build my apex and then just pat side to side all the way down the nail and remove like any excess always make sure that you smooth your nail out as much as you can before you cure in your lamp um, because you have that time to work with the poly gel so you should take advantage Okay, so I did go ahead and cleanse the nails with some isopropyl alcohol to get the tacky layer off. And now I'm gonna start by debulking my nails. Um, I'm using a fine grit safety bit and my Melody Susie 2-in-1 dust collector. Um, I do have some drill bit recommendations in the description box under my Amazon store in the category nail products. Um, also, like everything I use for nail prep and stuff like that is in there if you're interested. But yeah, I'm gonna start by debulking. Um, I'm just like taking like most of the bulk down right now, trying to get the cuticle area down as much as I can. As you can see, there's a little bit of that yellow acrylic showing through on the sides. So I'm trying to file it off as much as I can. Um, a little bit of it was showing, but like I said, you can't really tell unless you're like right up there near my nails. Um, so yeah, it is what it is. Um, I'm going to go in with my cuticle bit and like remove it a little bit more. Now I'm going in with my cuticle bit. This one is from Dashboard Beauty and I'm using it on a low speed. I just sped up the footage um, so that we weren't here all day. But yeah, it looks like I'm going super fast, but this is really sped up. But you wanna be really gentle around the cuticle area. It's a really sensitive area and you always wanna keep your jaw moving so that um, you don't cause damage to the natural nail. You wanna just clean like right in between where the artificial nail is and the cuticle area will help seal around that area so you don't get 
any lifting or anything that's why i always like to finish off with a cuticle bit as you can see i'm trying to file off a lot of that yellow um so yeah i did get most of it off so i was happy about that i was a little bit worried that it was going to be showing a lot but it was barely like visible in the end result um so yeah now i'm going in with my hand file and i'm going to shape up the nails we're doing a long tapered square for this set so right now i'm taking the bulk off the sides so you want to hold your hand file straight to take the bulk off the sides and file on the sides until like you're satisfied with like the width of your nails and then the taper in the tip you want to hold your hand file at an angle and file in towards the tip of the nail um, which will give it that tapered square look and of course if you wanted like more of a coffin look you would like taper the tip in a lot more but we're keeping this shape um like a tapered square so i'm not going to taper it in too much and my camera actually died when i got to the ring finger so we're gonna jump like right to the pinky in a minute just if you're wondering why i jumped over to the pinky um yeah my camera died um and to file the free edge i wanted to mention that you're going to want to hold your hand file at an angle and file like straight across or you could file up and down but make sure you're keeping your hand file straight no matter what you're doing so that the shape comes out even and don't like file on one side of your nails for too long because that's what causes your nails to come out uneven. Um, I usually like to do my shaping last because I feel like the shape looks a lot sharper that way rather than if you were to shape up your nails first and then go in with the drill because that will like dull your shape. Um, and then I am going to buff out the scratches before I do the nail art. All right, so moving on to the nail art, which is the fun part. And I did go ahead and change up the background to give you guys some new scenery. So let me know if you like the glitter background. I might try to like incorporate it in my videos a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I'm using Savalan gel liners to do the nail art. I really like their gel liners. Um, they're the best ones I've tried so far. A lot of the other brands, um, they're a little bit like gloopy and thick, but these, I really like the brush on them and like you do have to wipe your brush off but like I feel like they go on a lot smoother than the other ones that I've tried so if you haven't checked out this set of gel liners and you're like looking for a good one I really recommend this one it comes with 12 different colors and yeah I really really like them um so I'm using the shade 11 to make the little X's and O's it's like a glittery um silver color and now I'm going to be using the color 01, which is a like hot pink shade to draw like the little lips. Um, so we're doing like a little hugs and kisses design. Um, so to draw the lips for the top part, you want to kind of make an M shape and then fill it in. And then the bottom part of the lip is like a half C shape. That's the best way I could describe it. And you kind of just fill it in. Um, if I mess up, I take a little bit of acetone on my cleanup brush and just clean up. Um, but yeah, you just make like a little half C and I kind of like go in and, you know, make the finishing touches like as I go.
On the pinky, I'm going to be doing a side French nail design. I'm using that same pink and I'm kind of starting by like mapping out the line. So I'm drawing a line going up the side of the nail and then pretty much just filling it in. It's literally so easy and these liners are so pigmented. As you can see with one coat, it's like full coverage. Like look how effortless that was. Like it literally like just went on so smooth i really love these gel liners and something about their brush is a lot thinner than other brands that i've tried i think that's why i like it more because you can get like more precise lines i find it harder with other brands um gel liners like the brush is thick and then so is the product it's like how do you expect me to make smaller lines i don't know it's a pain when you have to keep wiping the brush off and it like gloops down from the top of the brush i can't stand that so that's why I really like these a lot and I've been getting a lot of questions about people asking me what um, liners I think are the best and I really think that these are the best way to go. So yeah, check the description box if you're interested. I'll have the links to everything down below. Um, so yeah, now I'm using some Beatles Rhinestone Gel to apply this little teddy bear charm that I have. And I'm also using some of these little rhinestone um, hearts and I'm just placing them into the gel. Then I'm just going to go ahead and top coat all the nails with some McCart Top Gel. And I am going to add some more bling to the pinky. I have another little tiny teddy bear stone and then some other like AB rhinestones that I'm just going to add there to give the nails a little something something. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I top coated underneath the nail on the French nail since it's like a glassy nail. It makes it look more clear. But yeah, after that, I'm going to cure for 60 seconds in my big lamp. And that is pretty much it. I really like the cute little X's and O's vibe with the little teddy bear and hearts and everything. I think it's really, really cute. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you're new to the channel, I'll love it if you subscribe because I post nail tutorials and reviews every week. So you definitely don't want to miss out. Um, also hit the notification bell so you get notified when I do upload a video and don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. Love you guys.